Good morning. Good morning, boys and girls. It's me, Donna V. And I'm so excited to be here today for story time. Today is Monday, August 9th. And it is sunny and hot. It's already 80 degrees here on the East Coast of New Jersey, on the East Coast of the U.S. Yes, it is a hot one already. But I'm so excited to be here to start our morning off together in the most brilliant way with kindness and love and exciting and is for news. I don't really know exactly what kind of exciting news I have. Well, actually, I do. But I'm going to share that news with you in a little bit. First, we're going to start each morning like we do with gratitude. What are you grateful for today? I woke up so grateful that I could help my daughter. She needed a ride to the car dealership or actually a ride home. And I was able to do it because it was early and I just got back in time. She said I would. She's right. And I will tell you what. Oh, I'm just so grateful I got to spend time with her. So that gives me something to be grateful for. Then, what's the other thing I did this morning? Oh, healthy habits. I brushed my teeth. Good morning, Jim Tomlinson. I've already announced the weather on the East Coast. I just got back in the house and it's already 80 degrees. Now, I know that you've been experiencing way hotter temperatures than that. And I need to know, is today a three-digit day? or a two digit day, because that's the question. Because I can tell you this, it's pretty hot out already here. So if you were to add 20 more degrees to get to 100, I can't imagine what that must be like. <gasps> it's 102? That is boiling hot. Well, stay hydrated. You know that we practice healthy habits, and we talk about brushing our teeth, taking a shower, making our bed. Well, one of the other healthy habits is definitely drinking water. So please remember to stay hydrated because if you are outside in the heat playing or walking or working, whatever it is, make sure that you do your body a favor, take care of it by making sure you're staying hydrated. This is how I do it. We look at this beautiful bottle, it says, you should totally drink more water. And we know that you totally should be drinking more water. I like to count to five so that I consistently keep hydrating with the same amount of water. You can do whatever practice you choose as long as you keep drinking water. So are you ready? Here's how I do it. You work in a brewery, so that's a different kind of hydration, and you should definitely continue to drink water while you're working there. Good morning, Ryan, all the way from Northern Ireland, UK. So happy to see you. So excited. Today's books are coming right out of the box of, that Lisa Marie has loaned story time. I'm so excited because there's so many different books in there, and today's letter... If you remember yesterday was M, right? M, and we had so many. It was like a million, a billion kids' names. Today's letter is N, and two of the books start with the letter N. They're, it's naughty. It's a character from England. So I'm really excited about that because I might just have to use my English accent. So don't tune out until we get that far if you don't think that I do a decent English accent. I think I do a decent English accent, um, said me from the U.S. And yes, Tracy Locke is here. Nice, starts with N. And good morning, Jerry Reesby. How are you? Tracy, are you with the most amazing Maggie, whose name I shouted out yesterday? And it's Manic Monday's morning, Maury Mimer's Never more, never more. Or tonight for open minded mystics, we'll be on at 8 p.m. with Christine Cool, and it would be really cool if you came over and checked it out. Yes, Maggie, hello, good morning. How are you, my little cutie pie? I am here to say the letter of the day is N. This is the uppercase. This 
is the lowercase. And I will say for all of you, my imagination makes me believe that if I planted this little letter N in the ground and watered it and gave it sunshine, it would grow to be this large, uppercase, strong letter N. But yes, nautical starts with N. If you have any other words you want to share, place it in the comment bar because I'd love to show everybody your knowledge. Now, Knowledge sounds like it starts with an N, but remember, there's a silent letter K there, and it's kind of like in our alliterative sentences. Do you know what those are? Let me tell you what they are. Ooh, you'll be there with bells on, Jerry Reesby. I love it. Ah, Namaste starts with N. Exactly. Nebula. Here's the thing. We practice uh, alliterative sentences every day. And one of the things that I find fascinating about alliterative sentences is that they are made up of words that start with the same sound, not necessarily the same letter. Because as we know with Nana's knees, Nana is N and knees is K because it's silent, right? And we learn all about that. And we are a nationally Rated show that's gone international. I love it. Name. That's right, Jerry. And I like how he puts the explanation points after exclamation. I just said explanation points. <laughs> exclamation points. Sometimes my brain works so fast and my mouth can't keep up or vice versa. So I love the excitement this morning. That's so true. Let's take all that excitement and shout out the kids. See who's on the back of this letter and make sure that I have all of the names, because you know it's true. We just keep adding names, which is amazing. <gasps> uh, oh, no, I have that one. I have that one. <laughs> Got them all. Are you ready to say good morning? And if your name starts with the letter N, you should totally be filled with so much energy jumping up and down, doing some jumping jacks, which we're going to get to in a moment when we recite the alphabet. But first, let's welcome everyone to the show whose name starts with N. That includes <gasps> Nina Star, Nathan, Nico, Nikki, Nathaniel, and Nicholas. Speaking of Nicholas, today is my friend Gina's son's birthday. Now, Nicholas, I want to say, I think he's 25 or 26, but I remember when he was born, and he's born August 9th, and I'm so excited, because that is today's date, so let's get a nice song ready for Nicholas. Are you ready? If anyone would like to join along, OMG, Natty Bumper Car has got the best song out right now, and it is a rap, and it is I wonder if I can play it for you. Oh my gosh, it is a birthday song that I'm going to find. With He sings it with Aloysius Pig. And I'm going to tell you that I absolutely love this song. I don't own the rights to this song. here on Storytime with Donovan. And that song was made for, I think, Kathleen Carney. And it is amazing. And I was just like amazed. I was singing that and dancing to that song last night when I saw it. So happy birthday, Nick. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Nicholas. Happy birthday to you and anyone else. Oh, I just like totally got such a kick out of that. And we just had our first 
world premiere video. I'm going to find out if there's a way I can upload it because you guys need to hear it in its entirety and see the video. It's hilarious. And if you know Natty Bumper Car, well, then you know that that's a different genre for him. And it was amazing. So thanks for watching with me. Okay. And it's for Natty Bumper Car. And you know where that is in the alphabet? It's letter 14. You know how I know? Because there's 26 letters in the alphabet. And the 13th letter is M. And the space between M and N is where we shout middle. Get your arms out wide. Get ready for non-spaghetti arm jumping jacks. Why do we do this? Because the little kids learn through repetition. Why do we exercise with it? Because it gets our endorphins, endorphins going and gets us happy. Why do we want to be happy? Because this is all about joy and waking up in the best mood possible. So let's do it. Arms out. Get ready and go. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, middle, N, O, P, Q, R, S, switch, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. <laughs> proud of you, proud of you, proud of you. If you practice that, if you did some exercises and recited the alphabet, be proud of yourself because if there's no one there watching you, I could tell you for sure, you know what you're building? Not just memory, not just muscle. You're building character, kid. And character something, I don't even think Jeff Bezos has that to sell on Amazon. No, it's something you have to earn. It's something you have to build all on your own. You cannot buy character. And it is something that is priceless. So I'm proud of you. And you should be proud of yourself too. Okay, who's ready to get even more proud? Because I'm about to show you the uh, uh, alphabet, the ASL alphabet. And I'm telling you right now, this is the way the way that we're going to learn it. And I'm going to just take a minute and focus because I'm like, whew. oh, you can say the alphabet backwards. That's cool. Z, Y, X, W, V, U, T, S, R, Q, P, N, M, L, K, J, I, H, G, F, E, D, C, B, A. I love it. It's amazing. Okay, here we go. This is what the ASL alphabet looks like. Oh, they changed it again? No, they didn't. It's so interesting what they did with the stream yard. This is what it looks like. Are you guys ready? I'm so excited because today we're going to practice. And again, the more you practice, the better you are going to remember this. And it's so good to learn because if you can learn the ASL alphabet, just think about how many more people you can communicate with. It's such an amazing skill to have. Now, this is just the basics. But the basics is the beginning of everything. Just like learning the alphabet then leads you to learn words and then words strung into groups or sentences. Sentences in groups are paragraphs. Paragraphs in groups are stories. And that's what this is all about. Learning that it's so cool to be able to read and communicate and wake up in a good mood at the same time. Okay, are you ready? Here we go. Hands up. A, B. C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V. W, X, Y, and Z. Amazing, you guys. I'm so proud of you. Good morning, Holly. Good morning, Patrick. How are you? So excited to be here today. It is August 9th. It is Monday. And we have some fun books coming up. But guess what else? We had a world premiere video. We are talking about healthy habits and good manners. We've already talked about brushing our teeth, drinking some water, waking up with gratitude. And now, oh yeah, there's this alliterative sentence staring me in the face. It's by Frank J. Simon. And I'm about to put it up so you guys get to see it first. Then 
I look at it and sight read it as fast as I can. Sight reading is when you've never seen something before and you just have to read it. Sometimes I stumble, sometimes I fall, but what do I never do? Give up, and you shouldn't give up either. Even if a word might be challenging or a phrase might be difficult, you just gotta keep going, keep trying it, right? Okay, there's so much power in reading. Here we go. I'm not looking, I'm not looking. Hmm. Let's see. I'm looking. Ned needs not know necessary narcissism next November 9th near Nathaniel's Nocturnal Nectarine Nursery. Ned needs not know necessary narcissism next November 9th near Nathaniel's Nocturnal Nectarine Nursery. Ned needs not know necessary narcissism next November 9th near Nathaniel's Nocturnal Nectarine Nursery. I, mean, I think I got that. I'm pretty sure I have to wait for the official word to come in and I'm fine because either way it was a fun sentence and I liked all of the different uses Ned needs not know do you see the KN sounds like there shouldn't be a K there but there is it's silent okay necessary narcissism next November 9th near Nathaniel's nocturnal nectarine nursery pretty amazing that there's one two Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen words that start with the letter N. One starts with the letter K, and that means fourteen words in that sentence, and it was fun. And it was nonsense, but it is a win for Donna. Sorry, Frank, but that was awesome, and I appreciate you so much for creating such amazing sentences on the days that you're here, and I miss you on the days that you're not <laughs> like how I just do that letter and okay anyway so who's ready for another healthy habit me who's ready for <gasps> vitamin time every day that we do vitamin time and we don't find the yellow vitamin I get excited and I think today might be the day I don't know why it's not I guess it's meant to be there when it's meant to be there but here's the best part this is where we practice healthy habits and good manners how is that, you might ask? Well, because healthy habits are taking the vitamins. Good manners is where we say please and we say thank you for our vitamins. Are you ready? Good morning, Christine Grilla. You are beautiful too. Frank Simon says one pink and one yellow. Ooh, he's getting brave. I love it. So, I'm gonna shake them up. You guys want to guess? You know what? The winner gets a million billion dollars from the universe and the chance to pick a page in a beginner a beginner's guide to the universe on common ideas for living an unusually happy life by author Mike Dooley, one of my favorite authors. Mm -hmm. Purples, please. Oh, alliteration again. I woke up really early today because I had to bring my daughter home from the car dealership. And I, I wanted to say, it's kind of wild waking up early. I feel even more energetic than normal. Two pink for Christine Grillon. Good morning, Joni Bailey. One purple and one yellow, please. You got it. Here we go. Ooh. Frank Simon said a pink and a yellow. You say a purple and a yellow. This is exciting. Oh my goodness gracious. I'm so excited. Okay, here we go. I have no idea. What is in my hand? Okay, and I like it that way. Here's the big reveal. One, two, three. Okay, so here's a pink. One, two, three. Two pink! Christine Grillon for the win! She gets to pick a page in the little yellow book, and yes, that coffee was strong. It is strong. Starbucks. I love Starbucks, especially. The nitro. It's like, what? Yeah. I'm like virtually I have to take a break from it because I'll be floating out of here. All right. So two pink means that Christine Grillon, you get to pick a number from seven to 158 and you are the winner of a million billion dollars. The rest of you that are in second place get a half a million billion dollars from the universe. And I think that's pretty good. 50 interesting all right 
okay, first I'm going to chew my vitamins and practice healthy habits while practicing and teaching good manners. I'm not going to chew with my mouth open or talk with my mouth full. Ever, never, no. Here we go. One, two, three. I don't know if Jerry Reesby is still here, but he usually would say, drink water, because after brushing your teeth with minty toothpaste and then taking tart vitamins, it like makes you make a funny face, but that's part of the fun of taking your vitamins. Okay, here we go. So amazing. Okay. Page 50 for Christine Grillon and everyone out there. This is the nugget of truth for the day. Changing what you have comes from changing who you are, which comes from changing what you think, which comes from changing what you believe, which are led by desire and action. Let me read that again. Changing what you have comes from changing who you are, which comes from changing what you think, which comes from changing what you believe, which are led by desire and action. Simply wanting something reinforces the belief that you don't have what you want, perpetuating that lack. Instead, name what you don't have yet by giving thanks in advance for having received it as if you already had. When you give thanks, for what you already have, the corresponding manifestation is to expand and increase what you have. When you give thanks for what you don't have, as if you already had it, the corresponding manifestation is to attract and create it into your life. Manifesting is fun and it's amazing. And if you want to learn more about it, you could go over to Open Minded Mystics. We have so many videos up about it. It's on YouTube, but wait until. This show is over. An amazing message about getting what you want by saying thank you for it in advance, Christine Grillon. And I hope you enjoyed your message today. Speaking of amazingness, I have news coming up, a news flash. But first, let's send love and light out to each other and to naysayers. Yeah. Today's letter is N, and I know that there's probably people in the world that are like, no, that can't help. Oh, she wishes I was at the shore. I know, Christine. I wish I was at the shore. I just I couldn't be there this time. I'm sorry. We're going to say thank you, and I'm going to be there soon. And I can't be this coming weekend, not that the invitation was there, because I'm going to the Jets game Saturday night with my daughter. Yeah. So excited. Jets versus Giants. It's a home game and it's preseason. I'm very excited because guess what, guys? As much as I love summer, my favorite season is football season and it's coming up. Girls Gone Green right there. Wednesday nights, one of the biggest sponsors, one of the biggest advocates for story time, teaching kids how to read. Oh, I'm telling you, it's amazing. Now, who's ready to send love and light to each other? Huh? 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 Yes. Carly's taking me. What? 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 I'm so pumped. All right, here we go. Let's get Bartholomew. This is Bartholomew, our original social distancing buddy. He is one of the biggest helpers, the largest light senders and light workers in the world. Who is Bartholomew? Well, really what he is, is he's a representation of what we all have within ourselves. And in our child, we have an imagination. We might have, I don't know, someone that we, you know, talk to on our mind, which could just be your subconscious. But starting March 21st, 2020, when we were in quarantine, this is the little guy that helped so many children recognize that they're really not alone. And ever since then, we brought 
Bartholomew out front and center so that this way so many of you can know that love and light and sending it to each other is not only important, but it is possible. So today we are sending out love, light, peace, and joy because together we can elevate the vibration of the global population one good deed, one kind word, one day at a time. Are you ready? Let's see. Who should we get out to help old Bartholomew? Hmm. Well, let's get Ugly Dog. Ugly Dog is a dog that, in a book, teaches us that it doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter what you are, who you are. It, you're, like, totally, totally capable of receiving love and giving love, right? So you may not think you fit the bill, but I do. And everybody here does. So naysayers, you know, we're going to change your mind today because we're going to send love and light out and peace and harmony and joy. As a matter of fact, let's get out, live, and we're going to send it in the form of beams of light and hugs. Okay? Are you ready? Here we go. From your head and your heart and your whole being. Let's go. See how easy that was? Look at that. Peace and love. Thank you. Right back to you, Jim Tomlinson, and to everyone watching. Because together, it's going to take us all to be positive, turn the light up, and tip the scales to positivity. And I have a feeling that the more of us that believe in that, we can actually do it. We could heal this earth, and we could heal my toe that just got a book dropped right on it. It's totally fine. It was a little book. All right. Ow. It was a little yellow book. Martha, let me go over here. I'm just going to pick this up off my toe. All right. Now, and my water and everything because it's okay. Holy macaroni. Here we go. Now we're going to ground ourselves and we are going to get ready. Take a deep breath in because. We are going to send love to ourselves now by way of kindness and kind words and positive uplifting words just like in what should Darla do? She's doing her mirror work. She's saying, I am caring, persistent, thoughtful, brave. You know all the things that you know about yourself. So are you ready? Here we go. I am brave. I am awesome. I am thoughtful. I am ready to read. Are you ready to read? Oh, I am ready to read. All right. We've got some really great books today and they're from the borrowed book box from Lisa. And I am really excited. But the big news is today that we have a book called All About Me, and it's written by Maddie, Mo I can never say the name, Moyaver, Moyaver, and it is a book that you could buy on Amazon, and I could, somebody could post a link, that'd be great. It is a personalized activity book for preschoolers, and what a great idea, and it says this book belongs to, and you fill it out, I am blank years old, this book was a present from, and it is a personal little diary, Moy Aver. And what it is, is it's a simple book that you can fill out and have your preschooler draw the pictures in, and then you can send it to someone that perhaps they've been missing. So if you haven't been able to see a grandparent or an aunt or an uncle, an uncle, and you want a really great way to maybe send a gift or update them and, you know, let them know how you're doing, you can make this book as personal as possible. And you know what? It's pretty amazing because this book right here, what's cool about the book is I think it's only like $7.50 um, when you buy it on Amazon. You can get a few of them and you could send it to, let's say, a grandparent. 
and they can fill it out back and send it to your child. I love this book. And I'm really excited. This is a picture of my favorite place. My favorite color is three things that are my favorite color. But what's awesome about it is I wish I had a diary like this when I was little because imagine when you grow up and look, you look back at this and you're like, ooh, seven year old me really loved the color green. Or this is a picture of what I like to do best. My favorite breakfast is, my favorite lunch is. I just think this is such a great book. And I want to say it was sent to me and I'm honored to have it here. And I hope to have the link up by the end of the show so that you can buy it yourself. But it says in the back, words and pictures will help you to personalize your book. Fun and laughter are the key to learning, uh, are key to the learning process. Follow the tasks tasks on each page designed to help in describing you, your family, your friends, things you like, and the world around you. When you finish this book, you'll have improved your reading, writing, and drawing. Then you can let other people read your special book to learn all about you. So I love that because it goes right along with what we say all the time. You might be an author, you might be an illustrator, but how cool is it that you can discover what you are through this book? So. Thank you so much for sending it to me, Maddie Moy Aver. Awesome. Aver. I think it's Mo Maddie Moy Aver. I'll get it right. All right. Now, let's get on to the rest of the books. All right. Let me see what I have here. I'm going to start out with, I love that there's this very cute note. It says, this book is a character from England. I have never read this book. I've seen this on TV like years ago, and I'm not quite sure what to expect, but it's Naughty. This is Naughty and the Goblins. Naughty was looking forward to his tea. If there's one thing I like, it's a boiled egg, he said. If there were two things I'd like, which goes just with the book that we were reading, if there are two things I'd like, they'd both be boiled eggs. That's naughty. Just then, Naughty's door opened. There stood Sly, the goblin. Naughty was surprised. That's the goblin. Don't walk straight in, he said. Please, please use the knocker on the door. He's saying, uh, hello, that's not good manners. Sly reached outside and knocked very hard. What do you want? asked Naughty crossly. I want you to take me to a party tonight. It's in the dark wood, said Sly. <gasps> Ooh. I don't think I want to go there, said Naughty. Doubtfully, I'll give you two bags of sixpences if you'll take me there and bring me home, promised Sly. Naughty's head nodded very fast. I shall be rich. Yes, I'll take you, he exclaimed. It's like he was calling Naughty his first Uber. It was very dark in the dark wood. Oh, I wish I hadn't come, said Naughty. Sly chuckled. You can stop here, he said. Naughty stopped the car. Where's the party? Naughty asked. Uh-oh. Suddenly, Gobo the Goblin popped out from behind a tree. Hello, Naughty. Here's the party, he said. Gobo cried Naughty. Is it your party? That's right, said Gobo with a nasty laugh. <laughs> Get out of the car. What? Uh-oh. This is spooky. When do we start dancing, asked Naughty. We won't start dancing, said Gobbo nastily. This party's a trick. We want your car for ourselves. Naughty, get out at once. What? He pushed Naughty to the ground. You wicked goblins, cried Naughty. That's stealing. We're only borrowing your car for a ride, said Sly. 
Goblins aren't allowed to have cars? I should think not. Oh, goblins aren't allowed to have cars. Well, I should think not, said Naughty, if this is the way you behave. Well, that's not nice at all. That is rude. I like your hat, Naughty. I think I'll borrow that as well, grinned Gobbo, and he snatched Naughty's hat. No, not my hat. Leave my hat, shouted poor Naughty. Oh no, not the one with the bell on it. But Gobbo climbed into Naughty's car. Oh, Naughty's car. Come on then, Sly, he said. I'll drive. And the two bad goblins drove off, laughing and chuckling. Oh, help, said Naughty crossly as he struggled to his feet. He's the victim of a carjacking. What's happening? Naughty was all alone in the dark wood. He felt very sorry for himself. All he could hear were the nighttime noises of owls hooting. I shouldn't have come to the dark wood, he whispered. I really hate to be rich. If I wasn't so cross, I should cry. See that? He thought he was going to be rich. And so he listened to that nasty goblin. You know that that's not right, correct? He wandered through the dark. Spooky trees, is there nobody who can help me, he cried. I'm all alone and lost. Just then, he came to a house. <gasps> I know where I am, cried Naughty. This is Big Ear's house. Look at that. <gasps> Who's there, called Big Ears. Big Ears, oh, Big Ears, shouted Naughty. It's Naughty, please come and let me in. Big Ears listened while Naughty told him what had happened. <gasps> what a terrible tale, said Big Ears. Here's a nice mug of cocoa, Naughty. You've had a shock. You must keep warm until you feel better. Those goblins make me very angry, Big Ears went on. I shall go to see Mr. Plod, the policeman. He'll try to get back your car and your hat. Oh, he looks cross. Oh, but he's going to help Naughty. Meanwhile, in the market square, Bumpy Dog was trying to get inside a dustbin. He made such a noise. Bumpy jumped up at the dustbin, and over it went. It started to roll down the street. Clatter, clang, clatter, clang, and Bumpy chased after it. Mr. Plod was standing outside the police station. Dear me, what is that awful noise, he said. And then a terrible thing happened. First, the dustbin rolled straight at Mr. Plod and knocked him down. Then Bumpy Dog raced up and knocked him down again. Poor Plod. He was very cross. It's you, Bumpy Dog, he said. Got you, my lad. He sat up. I'll take you back home to Tessie Bear. First thing tomorrow. I guess Bumpy Dog ran away. At that moment, Big Ears arrived, pushing his bike. Funny place to have a rest, Mr. Plod, he said. I'm not resting, I'm arresting this dog, replied the policeman. Uh-oh. You should arrest the goblins, said Big Ears. They've stolen Naughty's car and his hat. It happened in the dark wood. I'll help you find them. Thank you, said Mr. Plod, and we'll take the dog, this dog with us. Now, this is getting good. In the dark wood, Mr. Plod shone his torch. That's what they call a flashlight. There's no sign of the goblins, whispered Big Ears, and that 
dogs run off again, replied Mr. Plod. A loud bark made them jump. It's only Bumpy Dog, said Big Ears. He wants to play. Mr. Plod threw a stick for Bumpy. He ran after it. Mr. Plod and Big Ears sat down. We should make a plan, said Big Ears. Suddenly they all they heard a little bell ringing. <gasps> Bumpy Dog appeared with Noddy's hat. Wow. Thank goodness for Bumpy Dog. What a splendid dog, said Mr. Plod. He's found Noddy's hat. That's our plan, exclaimed Big Ears. Bumpy Dog can show us where he found it. Bumpy Dog wagged his tail happily. Oh, he's going for it. Mr. Plod and Big Ears followed Bumpy Dog until he stopped beside a hollow tree. Those goblins are in there. I can hear them snoring. They're asleep, said Big Ears. We must be very quiet, said Mr. Plod. Get him. We gotta find the car. Suddenly, Bumpy barked loudly. Oh no, said Big Ears. That will wake them up. We've been found, shouted Gobbo. Come on, Sly. And they started to run. Mr. Plod chased after them. He fell over Bumpy and his torch went out. Oh no, Bumpy. Come on, Big Ears. Panted Mr. Plod. We'll have to find them in the dark. What a strange chase it was. No one could see where they were going as they stumbled through the trees. Oh. Sly and Gobbo scrambled up a tree to hide, but they were laughing so much that they fell out. Stop in the name of the law, called Mr. Plod, giving chase as the two goblins ran off. But where's the car? Bumpy Dog rushed up to Sly and Gobbo, who then stopped so suddenly that Big Ears and Mr. Plod bumped into them and all four of them fell over in a heap. Oh no! Well done, Bumpy Dog. You've caught them, said Big Ears, as they all stood up and brushed themselves down. Come on, said Mr. Plod. We need to give Naughty back his car and hat and take these two back to the police station for a serious talking to. Well, they are in trouble. It was early next morning when Naughty woke up in Big Ears' comfy chair. Big Ears isn't home yet, and I still haven't got my car or my hat, he thought miserably, and he heard a wonderful sound. Par, par. It's my dear little car, cried Naughty. Bar bar. He rushed outside. There was his little car. Standing by it was Big Ears and Bumpy Dog, who was carrying Naughty's hat and wagging his tail proudly. Behind them was Mr. Plod, and tied to his rope were the two bad goblins, Sly and Gobbo. Ooh. Naughty thanked Bumpy Dog for his hat, and Mr. Plod led the two wicked goblins away. Well, Naughty, shall we have a boiled egg for breakfast, smiled Big Ears. Perhaps we can have two boiled eggs, said Naughty, with a chuckle. Ah, Naughty and the goblins. Let's keep it going, you guys, because we have another Naughty book. Right here, this is Naughty and his bell. Like that bell. Okay. It was a warm and sunny day in Toyland, but nobody was having an unlucky morning. Nope. It was a warm and sunny day in Toyland, but Naughty was having an unlucky morning. Uh-oh. He had just discovered that his car had a flat tire. When Mr. Plod strolled up and said, Now then, young Naughty, where were you in the middle of last night? 
funny thing is, is that's where I was today. I had to drive my daughter home from the dealership because her car had a big flat tire. In bed, of course, Nadi replied, why? Because somebody climbed into Sally Skittle's house and took, Mr. Plod consulted his notebook, some jam tarts, a meat pie, and a chocolate cake. <gasps> what? Nadi would never do that. You know that, right? But, Mr. Plod, you surely don't think I would do such a shocking thing, said Nadi. Well, said Mr. Plod, consulting his notebook again, Sally Skittle thinks you did. It's hard of her to think that, said Naughty, nodding his head fiercely up and down. I'll never, never, never take her out in my car again. No, never, never, never. Well, he's really upset. He's quite cross. Stop it, said Mr. Plod. That's enough nevers. I'm running out of pencil. Sally Skittle said she heard the jingling of a bell as if the thief ran away, and you're the only one in Toyland who has a bell on your hat. I didn't take anything. I didn't, I didn't, shouted Naughty, as Mr. Plod scribbling away frantically in his notebook. He has a bell. I bet you I know what happened, but I'm not going to say. That's enough. Didn't, said Mr. Plod. Oh, look what you've made me do. I've broken my pencil point. Well, I'll say no more for now. Naughty, but if you're not telling the truth, you better look out, warned Mr. Plod. Why would Naughty lie? Oh, no, said Naughty, bursting into tears. It really isn't my lucky day. First the flat tire, and now he's being accused of stealing. Later, having pumped up his tire, Naughty drove into town. Good morning, he called to Mrs. Tubby Bear and Pink Cat, but they ignored him. Uh-oh, word must be out. Jumbo came towards him. Good morning, Jumbo. Would you like a ride in my car? Naughty asked. Jumbo hurried on past without even speaking to him. Further down the street, Naughty met Mr. Wobbly Man. Naughty stopped his car and called out, Would you like a ride? Well, Mr. Wobbly Man spun around and wobbled back up the hill as fast as he could go. Why won't anyone speak to me? Naughty wondered. Well, I know why. Don't you know why? They think he's a thief. At the garage, Mr. Sparks was working under a car. Morning, Mr. Sparks. Naughty called out cheerfully, but in response, Mr. Sparks simply pushed himself further under the car. Oh dear, said Naughty. Perhaps Sally Skittle has told everyone that I stole from her last night. Perhaps. Wow. Just then, he saw Mr. Plod approaching. Well, at least Mr. Plod is still speaking to me, Naughty thought. Now then, Naughty, began Mr. Plod. Mr. Wobbly Man has just told me that someone with a jingling bell got into his house last night and took a box of ginger biscuits. What? That sounds delicious. It wasn't me, cried Naughty. I didn't go into anyone's house. Well, I only hope you're telling the truth, said Mr. Plod. Carry on. Of course I'm telling the truth, shouted Naughty as he drove off. Back at his house, Naughty sat on a stool feeling very miserable and sorry for himself. Nobody loves me, he sobbed. They all think I'm bad, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Oh, I'm so lonely. Poor Naughty. No, you're not, said a voice behind him. I'm here, Tessie said, Naughty. Tessie. Mm. Remember, if you stumble, don't quit. No, you're not, said a voice behind him. I'm here. Tessie, said Naughty. I didn't hear you come in. Are you still talking to me? Of course I am, said Tessie Bear. Ah. But people are saying such hard things, said Naughty. I know, and I don't believe them, 
said Tessie Bear. You're not a thief. I think the thief was pretending to be you, and I've got a plan to prove it. Come on, she said, taking Naughty's hand. What a good friend Tessie is. I agree with Tessie. In the market square, Dinah Doll was arranging lots of different bells on her stall. Look, said Tessie to Naughty. Dinah Doll sells bells on her stall. The thief must have bought a bell, so all we need to do is ask Dinah Doll who has bought a bell like yours. Smart thinking. Hello, Naughty, said Dinah Doll as Naughty and Tessie approached her stall. I see you still have one, friend. Yes, he has, said Tessie, and we both want to know whether you've sold a bell lately that makes a jingling noise like Naughty's. Well, yes, I have. Oh, look at that. I sold one yesterday to Clockwork Mouse, said Dinah Doll. Oh, Clockwork Mouse. What? Naughty and Tessie found Clockwork Mouse in the cafe eating a huge ice cream. Why aren't you wearing the bell you bought from Dinah Doll yesterday, Tessie asked. I'm not wearing it because I bought it for someone else, Clockwork Mouse replied. Oh, who? Naughty and Tessie cried. Don't shout. You've given me the hiccups. Said Clockwork Mouse. Look at that. Oh, wow. Gobble the Goblin gave me six pence for it. How did I know Goblin was behind this? I spent it all on this ice cream, and now I feel sick. You can finish it, said Clockwork Mouse, running off. <gasps> Whoa. Perhaps it's my lucky day, after all, said Naughty, eyeing the ice cream. Would you like some, Tessie? No, thank you, said Tessie. I am thinking very hard. Good morning, Lisa. Exactly. She said, boy, I did not have to send an alliterative sentence today. Naughty tripped you up today. Love to you and story timers. Those books were from England. They're quite lovely. I do remember the cartoons when my kids were little. If Gabo is the thief, said Tessie Bear, he may break into someone else's house tonight, and we may catch him if we listen out for his bell. We will have to tie your bell down so we don't think you're Gabo and catch it by mistake. That's right, said Naughty, chucking into his ice cream. Wouldn't it be a good idea if Naughty gave his hat to the policeman for the night? Because then it would prove that if someone heard it, it wasn't him. Hmm. That night, Tessie and Naughty patrolled the streets. Stay close to me, Naughty, said Tessie. Oh, I will, said Naughty, nodding silently. Just then they heard a bell. It was coming from Pink Cat's house. We must hide under the window and see if Gabo jumps out, said Tessie. There's something moving up there, said Naughty, but it's so dark I can't. <gasps> oh, he cried out as someone landed on him. Look at that. Guess what? Oh, are you all right, Naughty? Tessie Bear called anxiously. Yes, and it's definitely Gabo, said Naughty, standing up. I've got his hat. And him as well. Oh! Gabo tried to hit Naughty with his bag. The bag burst open and apples and buns rolled everywhere. He's been stealing apples and buns, cried Tessie. We need help. Look, someone is coming on a bike. Oh boy. This is getting good. Help! Please help, Naughty called out. What on earth is going on, asked Big Ears. Look. Oh, Big Ears, I'm so pleased to see you, said Naughty. It's Gabo. He's stolen some apples and buns from Pink Cat's house. Right, you bad goblin, said Big Ears. We shall take you to see Mr. Plod. 
Oh, thank you, Mr. Big Ears, said Naughty. Now Naughty will think I'm a thief. Oh, now nobody will think I'm a thief. And perhaps tomorrow will be a better day. Look at the thief. He's got a hat with a bell, just like Naughty. The next morning, all the toys were in the market square, talking about what happened that night. When they heard a familiar, bar, bar, it's Naughty, said Dinah Doll. The toys rushed to surround Naughty's car as he drove into the center of the square. Hello, dear Naughty, said Mrs. Chubby Bear. How clever of you to catch the thief, said Mr. Chubby Bear. We're so glad it wasn't you, said Jumbo. But they should have known all along that it wasn't. We know Naughty is never going to be a thief. Do you think I could possibly have a ride, asked Mr. Wobbly Man. I'm sorry, but none of you can have a ride with Naughty today, said Big Ears. No, said Naughty. Today is such a lovely day that we are going on a picnic. Burp, burp, went Naughty's little car as they drove out of the square. Hooray for Naughty, shouted all the toys. Hooray, hurrah, hurrah. Well, that's a happy ending to a story that made me a little nervous. I am not going to lie. Okay, guess what? Can you imagine? Those are some extra long books today. So we have to have three stories to make story time complete. So I'm going to look over and let me see, is there a book that might be a little shorter? Let's do this one. The Very Quiet Cricket by Eric Carl. One warm day from a tiny egg, a little cricket was born. Welcome, chirped a big cricket, rubbing his wings together. And the little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together. But nothing happened. Not a sound. Oh. Mm. Good morning, whizzed a locust, spinning through the air. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together. But nothing happened. Not a sound. Hello, whispered a praying mantis, scraping its huge front legs together. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together. But nothing happened. Not a sound. Hmm. Good day, crunched a worm, munching its way out of an apple. The little cricket wanted to answer. So he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened. Not a sound. Hi, bubbled the spittle bug, slurping in a sea of froth. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened. Not a sound. Oh, so frustrating. Good afternoon, screeched a cicada. They're everywhere right now. Clinging to a branch of a tree, the little cricket wanted to answer. So he rubbed his wings together. But nothing happened. Not a sound. How are you, hummed a bumblebee, flying from flower to flower? The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, and nothing happened, not a sound. <gasps> Good evening, lured a dragonfly gliding above the water. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened, not a sound. Good night, buzzed the mosquitoes, dancing among the stars, and the little cricket wanted to answer. So he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened. Not a sound. Wow. 
Well, a luna moth sailed quietly through the night, and the cricket enjoyed the stillness. And as the luna moth disappeared silently in the distance, the cricket saw another cricket. She too was a very quiet cricket. Then he rubbed his wings together one more time. And this time, he chirped the most beautiful sound that had ever, that she, had ever heard. He had to find his cricket. So see that? That's a beautiful story. The end. And that was a, that's cool news. Enid Blyton wrote the Naughty Books, the famous five mystery books, and the Secret Seven series. She sold over 600 million copies and is the fourth most translated author of all time. And that's amazing. So when I can, I will put the link up to the All About Me book. I'm going to have to put it up after because I don't have it here to copy and paste. But I promise I will. And I will continue to put it up. But I want to say thank you so much for today. For helping me start my day with joy. And starting it with joy together. And I'm so excited. Um, yeah. So be nice. I bid you namaste, and of course, put your right hand on your left shoulder and your left hand on your right. Give yourself a squeeze from me, hug yourself so tight, and know that I love you and everything's going to be all right. So thank you for being here, and let's breathe our way out into a happy Monday. I am peaceful. I am Filled with gratitude. I am love. I am totally content. You're welcome. And you're welcome. And you're welcome. So thank you for being here today. And always, I'll see you tomorrow when the letter for the day will be O. Tomorrow will be the 10th. And we'll see if we have another birthday to celebrate or song to sing. But I will see you tomorrow. If you would like to tune in tonight, Open Minded Mystics will be live at 8 o'clock with our guest, Christine Cool, teaching us all about essential oils and how to use them for health benefits. So I will see you guys then. You're welcome, Daryl. Nice to see you. Hugs to you as well. Great to see you. Have a beautiful day. Namaste. Bye, everybody.